グローバルディベントミスタ Global Debate Wisdom, This is the Global Debate Wisdom Part 2. Today we're discussing under the theme Battle Over Taxes, Supporting Public Finance in the Face of the Crisis. In the first part, we discussed、uh, one of the factors、uh, in the background、uh, against、uh, the fiscal crisis in the advanced、uh, industrial countries, the issue of、uh, aging and how to secure. The shortfall in financial resources. In the second part, we'd like to discuss、uh, rapid globalization and how that impacts、uh, the national public finance. And we'd like to deepen our discussion、uh, with regard to the tax system as it ought to be、uh, going、uh, toward the future. In part two, we're also waiting for your tweets.、Uh, please attach the hashtag and send us your tweets. Let us introduce、uh, the discussants.、Uh, In part two,、uh, we have、uh, from the UK,、uh, Professor at University College at London, Professor Norina Hertz,、uh, uh, whose、uh, theory is that、uh, major companies are threatening the existence of、uh, nations. She is also a very successful writer. And、uh, following on from the first part of our program, we have、uh, Professor Philippe Aguillon, a professor at、uh, Harvard University,、uh, joining us from France, and、uh, Mr. Wilbur Ross,、uh, chairman of a large.、Uh, Investment company from the United States, also from the United States, and New York University School of Law professor, Professor Liam Murphy. And at our studio, we continue to have a Professor Toru Morotomi, University of Kyoto Graduate School of Economics. Professor Norina Hertz in the UK. One may try to redistribute uh, through uh, taxes, uh, uh, but if the rich leave the country, you can't do this. This is the reality. So, what are we to do? Well, I do think it's a strange quirk of human behavior that some of the world's richest people are willing to uproot, move their families, leave their loved ones, leave their networks to go to another country just to pay a little less tax than they would if they stayed put. So we do see people like the French actor Gerard Depardieu. Um, saying that he is leaving France、um, because of the tax rate. But there is a question of how many people actually do move when tax rates are raised on the wealthiest. A few recent studies in the United States show that actually less people may move than we may think is the case. So it's possible that by raising taxes, the wealthy will actually stay put. And the governments will rake in more revenues. And surely it's only fair that in a society which is struggling, which most societies currently are, those who are richest pay their fair share. Mr. Wilbur Ross, Professor Hertz said. That、uh, the rich、uh, leaving the country will not have that much of an impact.、Uh, Mr. Ross,、uh, what do you think?、Uh, on the one hand,、uh, the rich are leaving the country, there is an outflow. It might be a negative for the economy as a whole. What do you think? Well, there are 100,000 French people now living in London alone, let alone how many are in Brussels. In Monaco and in Switzerland and elsewhere. So I think she's simply wrong that people don't move. People, in fact, do move. Wealthy people are probably the most mobile people in the whole world. They know people in lots of different countries. They have the means to have multiple houses and such. And as a result,、uh, they're much more able to move. But I think the real thing that an unduly progressive tax system does is it creates a brain drain on the country. I think the real problem for France is that young professionals, young business people are emigrating out of the country. And that's going to be a permanent loss of people. And they aren't doing it particularly because they're already in the top bracket. They're doing it because they believe they will have successful careers and they would ultimately end up in a high bracket. So I think when a country discourages its most active and brightest young people to move, that's a terrible loss, a terrible national loss. 
as to the suggestion by the professor that the tax be raised, but only for a temporary period, I'd like to remind everyone that in the United States, federal income tax was put in, in the night, right after World War I as a temporary tax to pay for World War I. Here we are more than a century less later and that we still have the tax system. So the idea that the public would believe that a tax was only temporary, I think is ill-founded. Taxes never seem to go away. That they become permanent and take on a life of their own. I also think that most people, in fact, are employed by private sector companies. So the idea that you can just tax away the income of the private sector company uh, is a wrong one because that will encourage the company to move elsewhere. And companies have shown they too are portable. Uh, Professor Norina Hertz, you have your hand up. Uh, could we hear from you? Yes. Um, I come from the UK, and yes, we have had an influx of French coming into the UK, but it hasn't been because of the tax situation. It's been primarily because the financial sector in Europe is based in the United Kingdom, in London, and so we have French nationals moving to London. Um, to answer your point about do people really move places because of taxes, well, California, which introduced the, in 2005 the millionaire tax, found that after it did so, there really was virtually no change in the number of millionaires domiciled there. And if you look at a country like Russia, which has a 13% flat tax rate on income, it's not like we're seeing billionaires from all over the globe rushing to move to Russia. So I do think that some of the arguments you're making um, are not backed up by the research. Growth. I'd like to ask Professor Hertz to be positive about attracting foreign companies uh, to uh, boost economic activities and to, by so doing, to uh, secure tax revenue. How do you view this trend by the respective countries? Well, the United Kingdom has actually announced that they are going to be reducing corporate tax rates over the next five years. But these are going to be corporate tax rates on big companies. The tax rate on small companies is going to be frozen. If the objective of doing this is in order to get companies investing more, then I'm not sure it's going to have the effect that they want. Because what's happening in the United Kingdom is many big companies are actually sitting on vast piles of cash reserves right now. So it's not that they don't have the money to invest, which of course a tax cut would just give them more money. It's that they don't want to spend it. So by reducing corporate taxes right now in the United Kingdom, the government risks losing money that it could be spending right now on education, on infrastructure development, on job creation, things that the United Kingdom needs very much for our future recovery. Uh, Mr. Wilbur Ross, uh, the CEO of an investment company, you have your hand up. Go ahead, please. Yes, I, I don't think Professor Hertz understands how businesses make their decisions. It isn't a question of whether the company has just the cash on its balance sheet. It's going to invest that cash where it can make the best rate of return. And the higher the corporate tax rate, the lower the rate of return that will come from a given investment. If you look at countries like China, which for years has charged foreign direct investments a much lower tax rate for corporate than they did domestic companies. That's one of the many reasons why China grew as rapidly as it did. It's also one of the reasons why a state like Nevada, which has no uh, income tax, neither corporate nor individual, has in fact had huge amount of migration from California. So the, the idea that just because a corporation has cash, it will spend it regardless of tax rate simply isn't how it works. Uh, Professor Hertz, you have your hand up. Uh, whether tax revenue or increase or not, could you answer from that perspective, please? 
I think Mr. Ross forgets that tax rates are not the only reason, of course, that corporations will invest in a particular country. They will also invest because it's a stable environment, because it has a skilled labor force, because the government there is investing in infrastructure. So there are a host of reasons why companies will invest in a particular country of which the tax rate is only one. Countries. Let us go to Professor Hertz. There are companies that have revenues as much as national GDP, then obviously they should take on a fair share of uh, social responsibility. Some people say that, but what is your view? Oh, definitely. It is a disgrace that some of the world's biggest multinational corporations are playing this game where they are avoiding tax and shopping, looking for jurisdictions where they can pay little or no tax. In Europe, Apple, Google, Facebook have paid virtually no tax due to their sophisticated accounting machinations. In the United Kingdom, the top 5,000 firms have managed to work out their corporate affairs so that they only pay 11% tax. The top 100 firms pay less than 5% tax on average. This is really unjust and something needs to be done about it. Mr. Ross, what, are you, what, are, what do you think? I think several things. First of all, with all the screaming and yelling that legislative bodies around the world have done, not one of these companies has been found to have violated the rules. So I think it's silly to say that someone who is a law-abiding company but is simply exercising an intelligent tax planning is doing something that's atrocious. If the UK government would like people to pay more tax, they should change their laws. It's, it's a failure of the UK law that allows this payment of royalties and markups of intercompany purchases. So the solution would be very simple if they wanted to deal with it. Second thing is that while corporations employ most of the people, the personal income tax in the United States is about eight or nine times the size of the corporate tax. So it isn't that the employees of the corporation are not paying tax, they are. And I think you really have to count that as part of the overall corporate tax burden. Because at the end of the day, if you raise corporate taxes, all you're gonna do is have corporations charge their customers more because tax is in fact another expense to the corporation. So the, the people are going to end up paying the tax effectively, whether they pay it directly to the tax man or they pay it through higher goods and services. There, there is no evil to, to corporations. And I think people should respect the fact that businesses are the main employers of the whole population. So if you hurt the business, who are you hurting? You're hurting their ability to employ people. Professor Hertz, you heard Mr. Ross say that the, these corporations are not violating any laws, and with uh, their ingenuity, they are being able to offer uh, products with lower prices. What do you think about this? I would say just because it is legal, it doesn't make it morally right or acceptable. Big corporations need to play their role in society and, be, and a positive role. They shouldn't be running around the globe looking for who can give them the best deal at a time when the global economy is suffering so much pain. Professor Aguillon in France, what do you have to say? Yeah, this time I agree with Mrs. Hertz. <laughs> uh, I think there is a big problem of fiscal optimization that, you know, uh, large companies 
uh, uh, can arbitrate between the fiscal system of various countries to an excessive extent. For example, the combination, you know, uh, big internet companies are based now in Ireland because they pay almost no tax. They can arbitrate between intellectual property uh, legislations, uh, uh, corporate tax in legislation, and they end up paying almost no tax. I think we really need a, co a fiscal coordination among OECD countries to start with. And I'm very happy that uh, the US, we used to be reluctant to the idea of fiscal coordination. The, the current US administration is more forthcoming to the idea that we should do something about it. And there I agree with Mrs. Hertz. Uh, that uh, uh, there is something indecent to see, you know, to have a system at the end that the large companies end up paying no tax at all. I think it would be fair that, you know, but that requires fiscal coordination among, uh, and that's part of the kind of coordination that should come in the aftermath of the recent crisis. We need to coordinate on a number of things, uh, starting with fiscal coordination uh, to avoid these kind of things. We are starting to run out of time, but uh, Professor Hertz, this um, attempt in the European Union included in this globalized era and uh, in this uh, day and age where aging of society is underway, what do you think is going to be the ideal tax to finance the necessary expenditures? Well, I think there are no easy fixes to deal with the ageing population, which is a serious concern. But there are some things governments can do on that front, ranging from increasing the age of retirement to providing tax incentives and breaks for people to create their own personal retirement schemes, um, increasing the tax burden on those who are working, unfortunately, would be a way to address the looming, the looming concerns. And also, government has a role to play in encouraging savings. So whilst I do think that the ageing population is a real concern for governments with no easy fix, there are some tangible steps governments can take to address it.